Hi. This is the last lesson about brushes in Photoshop CS4 and earlier. We're going to finish up with a short discussion about making a brush from a colored picture and then talk about organizing your brushes. If you missed the previous lessons, there are links in the description for this one. Last time we made a brush from a shape, which is very simple. This time we're going to make one from a colored image, which can be a bit harder. This is a picture from an antique book I have about moths. I've been making some moth brushes and I want to make one last one. Remember, you can't make a brush that's different colors like this in Photoshop. Photoshop brushes just look at the value of the pixels and make a brush where the darker values correspond to opaque areas in the brush. So first we need to make this image black and white so that we can see the values we'll be working with. There are several ways to do that. If you have a more recent version of Photoshop, you have black and white adjustment layers. So to use one of them, we're going to go down here to the adjustment layers and we're just going to choose black and white. And that will give us a black and white adjustment layer and you can just play with the sliders here and um, change the colors into different amounts of black and white. Or you can go up here to the presets and use one of those. The infrared preset, for instance, gives you some pretty interesting effects. But if you don't have them, you don't have those. So let's throw this away. And I'm going to close that by double clicking in the gray area next to adjustments. And I'm going to show you a completely different way to do this by going to image mode and choosing LAB color and that changes the color mode of your picture. If you go over here to channels, you will see that there's lightness A and B. The lightness, of course, is the L in the LAB color mode. And if you click on the word lightness, then you get a black and white image that shows the lightness values in your original picture. That's all we need, so we're going to copy that and paste it by using Command A, that's Control A on a PC to select all. Command C, that's Control C on a PC. Command N, that's Control N on a PC to open up a new image. And um, we're going to leave the clipboard size, that's fine for the size, but we're going to change the color mode to RGB color so that we can use another adjustment layer. And then I'm going to click OK. You don't have adjustment layers in grayscale images. And then I'm just going to paste with Command V, that's Control V on a PC, and there's our picture. And we're back in RGB, and we have a single layer, and it's the black and white. So I'm going to go ahead and close that because we don't need it anymore. Don't save. It's been cropped to the size of the active pixels, but that's all we need, so that's fine. And now I'm going to go back down to the adjustment layers, and I'm going to get levels, and we can make the black areas even darker, and we can make the white areas lighter to give us some more contrast in the image. And we can mess with the one in the middle if we want to as well. Now remember that the white pixels are going to be transparent, and there are some that are pretty much white, and I don't want any transparency. So I'm also going to knock the white point of the output levels down just a little bit so that everything has some paint on it anyway. And when I like what I have, I just select it. That's Command A, Control A and a PC to select all of it because we want all of this in the brush. And now right now we're on levels. If we go to Edit, Define brush preset here, you'll see that it's dimmed. That's because I'm on my adjustment layer. I need to click on the other layer. And then when we go over to edit, we can define our brush preset with no problem. So define brush preset. And it doesn't matter that we're not on the top layer because it always takes a merged image anyway. And I'm going to call this sampled moth six because that's what it is. And click OK. And now I have my new brush. If I um, go over here, you will see the brush, and my goodness, that's pink. So I've been making a lot of these moth brushes, as I said. I'm going to close that up, and I'm going to open up my brush panel here. And um, right now we have our new brush tip that we just sampled, but I want to make it match these other ones. I'm going to undo the painting that I did here and um, show you what one of these sampled brushes looks like. And I want it to look like that again. So the way that I do that is to select the preset, and then I'm going back to Brush Tip Shape, and notice that it's 71 pixels and about 174% spacing. We're going to have to reset that, so we have to remember that for a couple of seconds. Go back to our new brush and change it down to um, 71 pixels more or less, and the spacing is 170 some percent more or less. And now I have a new brush that matches the old brush just like that, because all the other settings persist. So now I can save this one like we did before. 
I'm going to save it as a brush preset. I'm going to call it Moth Scattered Hue. Oh no, it was supposed to say Moth 6 Scattered Hue. Better do it again. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make a new brush preset again. And this time I'm going to call it Moth 6 Scatter Hue and click OK. And now it's all saved. And it's right here in my presets, Moth 6 Scattered Hue. Now I could just right click and delete that brush that I made a mistake on, but I'm going to show you how to organize the brushes because we've been making them and they're building up. And the more brushes you have, the harder it is to find the one that you actually want. So we um, could get our preset manager over here in the presets, but then it'll open up a lot of different things. And I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to go over here to the menu at the top right hand corner of the brushes panel and I'm going to choose preset manager from there and that opens up the preset manager now of course we could look at the um, icons here in different ways if we felt like doing it so that we could see them more easily but I like to see the names when I'm doing this kind of stuff so I'm going to go to the large list and here we can rearrange stuff we can make the brush that we made a mistake on go away forever delete brush there it's like it never happened you didn't see it. We can take all of these sample brushes, for instance, and move them next to each other so that they're all neatly organized and the way we want them. We can select brushes that are close to each other by holding down the shift key and selecting them like that, or we could hold down command, that's control on a PC, and we can pick up other brushes that we want, and we can save sets of brushes with just those brushes in it. If you save the set in the application folder, in presets, in brushes, then they'll show up in a menu later. So let's call this Moth Brushes and save. And now I can delete these. I've got them saved someplace else. They're nice and safe. And I don't need them now. Let's say I'm going to be using them for a project later. I just wanted to make them today because I had a little extra time. But I'm going to be working on some other stuff and I don't want them cluttering up my brushes panel here. So now they're gone. See, they're not in there anymore. And they're also not in this menu because I have to close and reopen Photoshop in order to make them show up. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to quit Photoshop and reopen it. And here we are back in Photoshop. So now I can use the menu here and notice that my moth brushes are right in the menu. So I can just choose them and then I can choose whether to replace the current brushes with my moth brushes or to append them. And I'm just going to append them, and now they'll show up at the bottom of the list, and I have them back. And I can just use my moth brushes and put as many moths on there as I want. And it's all really nice and fine and wonderful. You don't have to save them in that folder if you want to organize brushes that you're not going to use very often but you do want to still have around you can save them any place you want. And then you can just go to Load Brushes. And um, also in my application folder, I keep a folder called More Brushes. And here I have all kinds of other brushes. And one of the ones that I have is the Sampled Moths, which I saved earlier. And I can load them, and they automatically just show up at the bottom. And there are my various Sampled Moths. So it's just as easy as that. And in fact, you can move the files around, the ABR files around, wherever you want to have them. You can trade them with your friends, you can post them online, you can back them up. They're just a file, so you can do anything with them that you can do with any other file. And that's that. Now you know everything you need to know about brushes in Photoshop CS4 and before. From here on in, it's just a matter of practice. Now I'm going to take a break from brushes for a bit because I feel like I've been doing them forever and ever and ever. And we're going to do something else next time. Until then, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.